Okay, so here's a roadmap for what's coming next in the class. We'll first describe how to learn phrases, what is often called a phrase-based lexicon, from translation examples uh, with the alignments recovered using the IBM models I showed you last time. We'll then describe a basic phrase-based model. And then finally, we'll spend some time talking about the decoding problem in phrase-based models and describe a decoding algorithm for phrase-based models. So the critical idea in phrase-based models is to automatically learn a very la large lexicon from data where the lexicon consists of phrases in one language paired with phrases in another language. So here are some example phrases. On the left-hand side, I have German. And on the right-hand side, I have English. And each of these entries in the lexicon pairs some sequence of German words with some sequence of English words. For example, this first entry says that these two words in German can be translated as these two words in English. And notice in general I can have one or more words on the German side and I can have one or more words on the English side and the number of words can differ. So for example I have two words here in German corresponding to three words here in English. So these lexical entries are going to form the basis of the translation system. And most importantly, they go beyond the simple word-to-word -word translations we saw in the IBM models. So remember, in the IBM models, we had parameters such as the probability of this word in French being a translation of this word in English. Now we're going to have probabilities, for example, of this entire phrase Um, of being a translation of this English phrase. So now we're going to have translation entries or lexical entries with multi-word phrases on either side and they will have associated parameters which we we'll also learn from data. So what we're first going to describe is how we actually learn these lexicons from a set of translation examples. So as in the IBM models, I'm going to assume that there is some very large set of training examples for example, we might have German versus English uh, training data, where each example in the training data consists of a German sentence paired with an English sentence. We might have several tens of thousands or several hundreds of thousands of example translations like this. And given this corpus, this uh, what we call a parallel corpus, or what is sometimes called in the literature a bitext, Given this input, we're going to describe methods for learning a lexicon. These lexicons can often be very, very large. They could often have many hundreds of thousands or even millions of entries of this form. So here's an example which illustrates the basic idea of how phrases are extracted from translation examples. This is taken from a tutorial by Philip Cohen and Kevin Knight. So, our training example in this instance is this Spanish sentence aligned with this English sentence. So these two sentences are translations of each other. And we can run the IBM models and get some kind of alignment. So we might have, for example, maybe something like this. Okay, We'll talk a lot in a moment about how we use these alignments in deriving phrases. But once we've derived the alignment, we can start extracting phrase pairs from this example. And so here are some examples. So Maria is identified as a translation of Mary. We have this correspondence. We have um, this word uh, corresponding to the word which, this word corresponding to green. So these are just single word phrases. We might, for example, uh, align the Spanish phrase no to the English sequence did not. And then we might have longer phrases. So for example, we might have the, the fact that this sequence of words which is seen here in the Spanish is aligned to this sequence of words did not slap in the English. And here's another example. So each phrase, uh, phrasal entry, each lexical entry, is going to pair some subsequence of Spanish words with some subsequence of English words. We might have anything from word to word correspondences, just a single word on each side, to much longer phrases where we have multiple words in one language 
uh, aligned with multiple words in the other language. And we're basically going to run some algorithm over each of our training examples in turn, and from each of these, extract a set of lexical entries of this form. So you can imagine if we have a few hundred thousand training examples, each training example consists of a pair of sentences, we might end up with a quite large set of possible phrases. So here's a quick recap of how we can use the IBM translation models to derive alignments in our training examples, um, specifically how IBM Model 2 can be used in this way. So remember that IBM Model 2 defines a distribution. So um, M is the length of the French sentence. E is an English sentence, so it's E1, E2, up to EL, where L is the length of the English sentence. For example, we might have this English sentence here. F is a French sentence consisting of words F1, F2, up to FM. And um, A is a set of alignment variables, so A1, A2, up to AM. So conditioned on an English sentence and a French sentence length, we have a distribution over all possible choices of alignment variables and choices of French translations. Now a very useful byproduct is that once we've trained the model, I, once we have these Q and T parameters I showed you last time, we can calculate the most likely alignment for any training example. So given a English sentence, a French or other foreign sentence, in this case a Spanish sentence, um, and the length of the uh, foreign sentence, M, we can search over all possible alignments and find the alignment that is most likely under the model. And what will, this will actually do is, for each foreign word, we will find the most likely alignment, where the alignment just specifies for each foreign word, which word in the English it aligns to. So, in this particular example, we might, for example, recover the alignment I'll show you here as a reasonable alignment for these two sentences. Okay, And so we can do this to every one of our training examples. Once we've learned these Q and T parameters using the EM algorithm, so we derive Q and T using EM, we can go through our training sentences one by one and recover these alignments. Notice that under these IBM models, these alignments have the following property. They are for each foreign word, we have an alignment to a single English word. So for each foreign word, we pick out a single English word to which we're aligned. It's going to be useful to represent these alignments as um, what are called alignment matrices. And so here's an example, again for this English-Spanish pair that I just showed you. And so I have the English words down the column of this first column, and I have the Spanish words across the top of this table. And then I show a dot if there's an alignment. Okay, so this dot means that Mary and Maria are aligned. This dot means that no and not are aligned. This dot means that slap and dab are aligned, and similarly, okay, uno is aligned to slap, bof is aligned to slap, and so on. So we place an alignment, or one of these dots, in a cell in this matrix if these two words are aligned. Notice once again that for each Spanish word, we have an alignment to a single English word. So for each Spanish word, you see exactly one symbol, or one dot in this column. So we have one dot here one dot here, and no dots in any other position, one dot here, one dot here, one dot here, and so on. Okay, so again, we're obeying this constraint that each foreign word is aligned to a single English word.